Hi again, and welcome back. In step two of this video tutorial series for Top Solid 7 and working with bottom-up assemblies, we're going to include a second part. In this case, it will be the bottom elbow. Now, when we include the bottom elbow, we'll have to also introduce you to adding your first assembly constraints. In this case, we'll review axis on axis and plane on plane. Now we're going to include the bottom elbow part. To do this, we'll go to our parts folder and we'll go find bottom elbow in the list. Again, you'll use the simple drag and drop method to include this into the assembly. Now, when you do, you'll notice that your component was included into the positioning group of the previous component. The way you know this is because it says positioning one up here. Now, if yours didn't include this way, here's what you do. You go up to the top right side of your screen and you make sure inclusion and last position is selected. If it's not selected, it will look like that, unhighlighted. Go ahead and select it now if it's not done. And then go ahead and re-include the component into the assembly. The reason you want to include these components into the previous positioning group is because as we go through this assembly, we're going to use dynamic assembly positioning in order to test our assembly. And the only way you can do this is if they're all part of the same group. Now from here, we're going to start adding some simple constraints. Up here at the top of the screen in your assembly tab, you'll notice that there are a lot of different constraint types that are supported within Top Solid. To begin with, we're going to use one of the more automated ways of working called constraint. And if you look at this icon, you'll notice there's a little magic wand there. Simply put, the magic wand is a type of wizard. It's going to try to interpret the best type of constraint to add based on what you've selected. Let's have our first look. To begin with, it's asking for the source. In this case, I want the source to be this cylinder. So I'm going to zoom up to make my selection easier and select this cylinder. Now, I'm going to zoom out and come down to the part I want to apply the constraint to and select right here. Now, to begin with, if I look, this is going to spin up there, but it's also going to go up and down. Now, my part actually is constrained upside down. I need to flip it over. To do this, I'm going to go to the balloon here that says it applied an axis on axis constraint, and I'm going to put my cursor to the left right there, and when I see that finger, I'm going to double left mouse click, and this inverts that constraint. Next, I'm going to rotate the view, and I'll select the bottom face of my part, and I'm going to select then the top face of that part. And like that, the wizard applied a plane on plane constraint. From here, I'll go ahead and hit the X to get out of constraint. And now if I left click and hold, I can test this. And this is exactly what I want. I want this to be able to pivot about that axis. Perfect. Like that, I can validate positioning one and perhaps save my work.